We'll call our 10th regular meeting of Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonnet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Monty Mayer? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Graf? Your Honor, I would ask for approval of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting. Move to the second that the minutes of the previous council meeting stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Commander Winninger and uh, <coughs> veterans are here to lead us in a pledge. You want to grab the mic chair? Chair. Is that all right? One, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you, gentlemen. This evening, well, I can wait with that because the camera isn't up here yet. Um, public forum, Pat? No one. Okay. This evening, uh, we have uh, police department with us and the veterans with us. And I believe, Bob, you're going to present the veterans uh, with a check this evening. Could you step, step up the mic, please? Oh, sir. I'm uh, Bob Gutowski from the Sheboygan Police Department. I'm making this presentation on behalf of uh, Sergeant Tim Tarkowski, who could not be here. Um, as, a re as a direct result of the war on terrorism, our country has deployed thousands of our children, husbands, wives, and loved ones to Afghanistan, Iraq, and many other locations throughout the world to defend our freedom. The VFW has provided telephone cards for our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard men to stay in contact with their families. A telephone call is one of the most cherished gifts we can receive from those who serve. On Sunday, April, 20, on Sunday, April 13th, which was Palm Sunday, uh, Sergeant Tim Tarkowski and members of the Sheboygan Police Benevolent Association uh, decided to assist the VFW with providing money for telephone service to our servicemen and women through their project Uplink. A brat fry and raffle was held at Gussie's Northwestern House at South 19th and Union Avenue. $5,443.31 was raised to be donated to VFW Project Uplink. At this time, I'd like to thank, first of all, Sergeant Tarkowski for taking the initiative to do this, as well as other individuals in the community, uh, corporate sponsors, uh, businesses who made donations, uh, especially uh, Roger and Ruth Gussie from the Northwestern House who uh, helped or let us use their facility, uh, Mike Sweeten and Mike Sweeten Plumbing for use of his facility, uh, Mayor James Schramm, and again all those who so generously gave items and cash donations for the raffle. However, I want to take this opportunity to also thank the citizens of, of Sheboygan, our city. Uh, they came to the event and they chose to make this fundraiser a, a very, very successful. Uh, our community has once again shown that it supports those in the armed services and appreciates everything that they do to defend our country and our freedom. It's now my sincere honor to provide the VFW with the check from the citizens of our community for $5,443.31. This is hard to take. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Council, and citizens of Sheboygan. 
the veterans of foreign wars of Wisconsin like to recognize the Sheboygan Police Department under the supervision of Sergeant Tarkowski, VFW Post Auxiliary 9156 and Post Auxiliary 1230. I have a certificate for 1230 VFW Post, which is, <clears throat> I'm just gonna read one and then we'll get them out, all right? Okay. In recognition of sincere appreciation of your support of the VFW Operation Uplink to provide phone cards to the men and women serving on mili active military duty around the world as well as hospitalized veterans, your commitment to help support this program has earned you a special recognition for your efforts to assure that the Operation Uplink continues to meet the needs of American heroes. And it's the Commander-in-Chief Raymond Sisk of the VFW. Thank you and congratulations to you. I have the same certificate of recognition for the Sheboygan Police Beloved Association. And I have the same certificate for the Sheboygan Memorial Post 9156. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. Your generous donation will benefit the Operation Uplink program that provides calling cards to our men and women who are presently serving in arms way. We all know where that's at. By the way, our son's home. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the city of Sheboygan, all our fine men of the Sheboygan Police Department and our local veterans, a very special thank you to the mayor's administrator, Mary Ryer, for all the work that she has done to protect us. However, there's one other thing I'd like to mention to the council tonight, and Mayor, I wanna say thank you. The city has sponsored the Korean commemoration for the Korean War veterans. The city has sponsored the troop rally for our veterans. And now this, all I can say is thank you, and God bless you. At this time, I would like to have the police, the commander of 1230 and 9156 and myself up in front of the mayor's office for a picture. Okay. Alder McGrath, consent agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> In the consent agenda item 1010, which is the establishing of uh, debt issuance, um, 
I believe that's going to be hold, held. Do I have to make a motion for that separately, or can you just call that? You can make a consent well, agenda it. motion excluding content. Okay. Um, then for items 10 1 through 10 11, excluding 10 10, I would move that we accept and adopt all RCs, accept and file all ROs, pass the resolution, and the substitute of the general ordinance. It's been moved and seconded to pass all the ROs, accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, pass the resolutions and su substitutes of ordinances. Under discussion, Alderman Ryan Flesh. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull forward 10 9. Okay. And I move to file 10 9. It's been moved and seconded to file 10-9. Alderman Rainflesh. Under discussion, Your Honor. Today, our city, much like many other cities in Wisconsin, face a fiscal crisis that has been unmatched in recent history. The crisis was not entirely the fault of the cities. However, it is towards Madison that we must look for much of the blame. In an attempt to put the state's financial house in order and to cover up a lengthy history of financial mismanagement, the politicians there made a few token cuts in the state budget, but in order to balance their budget, kept the monies that should have properly gone back to the cities through shared revenue. We know that the Madison politicians are not serious about dealing with the financial crises Wisconsin cities face, for if they were, they themselves would have swallowed the bitter medicines of state property tax, fee, and income tax freezes. Instead, they tried to pass a local tax freeze so that they could look like they were doing all they could to relieve the burden put on Wisconsin residences. When I look at their actions, I must believe otherwise. However, setting the blame game aside, as a city, we must now do all we can to relieve the burden on our local taxpayers. I am pleased the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee is taking the problem seriously by recommending a limit to a tax levy increase in 2004 to just 2%. However, I think we can do better. I recommend that until the economy turns around and the jobs are plentiful again, we hold the line on taxes and raise the tax levy 0%. We must do this to show our residents that we are listening to their financial concerns in these hard times. We did not ask the state to pass the burden of fiscal responsibility to us, but they did. We must not raise local taxes by 2% today. I believe our residents simply cannot afford it. A freeze may be a bitter pill to swallow, but we must swallow it. Thank you. Okay. Is there any discussion on 10-9? Alderman Perez. between the desk and chair. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, resolution that is uh, under discussion now, in effect, is a resolution that will increase taxes to the residents by 2%. According to a new American City Business Journal analysis of taxation data from the U.S. Census Bureau, nowhere in America are the property taxes higher than New York City. But Wisconsin put three of its cities in the top of the list. Sheboygan ranks number 12 in the United States with high property taxes. Can you believe this? Out of all the communities in the entire United States, Sheboygan ranks number 12. This frightening and alarming statistic points out a fundamental problem for Sheboygan. Our government spends too much for its size. The cost of our government has grown faster than the economy. It appears we have created more government, not better government. We are on the verge of failing the people of Sheboygan. The city of Sheboygan is struggling with severe cash problems and is scrambling for money. So what do we do? Just charge it to the taxpayer, right? Wrong. The taxpayers are not a credit card to use indiscriminately. I will not vote to increase property taxes by any amount. An increase in taxes is neither fair nor just to the hardworking people of Sheboygan. There are countless people out there who are losing their jobs. Countless more are having their weekly hours reduced. Their paychecks are getting smaller. Many people stand to lose their jobs, their homes, their cars, and who knows what else. And this common council wants to increase their taxes again? Well. You're not going to do it with my vote. And I hope the other aldermen don't vote in favor of it either. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Alderman Renfleisch and Alderman Perez. Right now, all of us in Sheboygan are facing 
tightening our belts because we all have a bit less income than we did two years ago. Sheboygan as a city has a bit less income than two years ago. But our citizens just don't have that extra money at all. The hours are cut, jobs are eliminated, and I hate to say at home we're living a bit shabbier. Maybe as a city for a couple of years we have to live a bit shabbier because the money isn't around. Thank you. Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull forward 10, 11. Oh, hang on. Ingrid, we, still, we have to vote on 10, 9 first, then you can, okay? Then I wait. Okay. Is there any other? Alderman Doyle on 10, 9? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was on the Finance Committee, and I did uh, support the 2% sort of as a compromise, but in the past week, I've been uh, deluged with calls from elderly people, especially saying, we just can't afford this. And so uh, I think that respecting the, the wishes of the citizenry of, of Sheboygan to control taxes, I think I'll support this. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess when I first heard about this resolution, I had my doubts. We have had some pretty tight budget years since I've been on the council. But we all pretty much knew that this year was shaping up to be one of the worst. And not necessarily because of something we as a council did. We all know the state has gotten itself into a really tight jam. And in my opinion, they are at least, or at least some of them are, trying to lay the blame on local government. What I dislike the most about the budget mess the state is trying to lay at our doorstep is that they think the money they take from us and redistribute as they see fit is their money. Well, it isn't theirs, it's ours. It belongs to us, to our city, and to our citizens. Enough said on that. However, this resolu resolution to hold the tax levy increase to 2% is a good idea, a good place to start. We've never set a limit that low that I can remember on this council and I think it's a good place to start. That does not mean we're going to raise it 2%. That means the limit is 2%. The funny thing is that at 2%, our funds only increased by $372,000. Think about that. 2% of, of the tax levy for the city of Sheboygan. When you look at your property tax bill, the city of Sheboygan is approximately one-third of that property tax bill. And by raising taxes 2%, that's $372,000 more that the city will get. We have to pay more for gas and electric and, and all the utilities, just like everyone else. And if you think about it, that's $7.44 per resident. That's a lot of money to many people, and it may be too much. And it also is what is required to give us the means we need to move forward. What I find disturbing is that when the state cut our shared revenue by over $825,000, we received over $16.50 less per person return to the city of Sheboygan of our own money. Money we send to Madison every single working hour of every day. And I can guarantee you and I, that I send a lot more than $16.50 to Madison every year. And I like to know where that money is. Every single payday, look at your state income tax reduction, deductions. Every time you purchase taxable items, count up the nickels. Try to pass less than $50 or pay less than $50 to have your car registered in the state of Wisconsin. Yet they blame the property tax, the primary funding device for local services. Go figure, $7.44 a year per person at the max if we pass this resolution. And back to this resolution. We have a lot to talk about in the next two months. And as in the past, we will do what we have to do. Right now, passing this resolution is the right thing to do. Besides, we can always change this. And if we must, I am sure we will. And when that time gets here, we'll know. I think we should not file this. I think we should pass the resolution. I think it's something that we have to do. And it's not because we want to. It's because we have to. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I will agree with Alderman Warner here. But uh, just to, to let the rest of the council know about this document. We discussed this in, um, in finance, and all the finance committee members there unanimously approved this. Um, this sets up for each department, as well as for the library, and as well as for the transit, a minimum, no, it's probably a maximum that they can, 
they can even think about going to if they really, really need it, and that's got to be proof test. This gives them um, a tool that they can use when they're setting their budget so that they know, okay, the, the, the city says, okay, we're going to try and give you 2%, and they aren't even going to get, each department is not going to get 2%. What's going to happen is 1.1% of this 2% tax levy um, would be for um, debt service requirements that we need. So 0.9% is left for each department to raise their budgets. And if you'll remember, the council throughout the, the past year has granted 3% or more raises to all employees. We just recently hired, I believe it was six more. We have a uh, a document in tonight to hire um, another employee. Now, if you don't want to go with tax levy and say it's got to stay at zero, then you're going to look at the, the last thing the mayor wants to do, and that's me also. Um, I don't want to lay anybody off, but that's what we're heading for. If we keep on saying, well, we're not going to raise taxes, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, um, we're looking at layoffs. And uh, there were some preliminary figures issued uh, several months ago that said if, if everything holds as it is, we could be talking up to 50 people or more. But we're hoping not to do that. And that's why suggestions have come down, such as uh, a reduction in, in um, work hours and, and things that we're looking for each and every department to do. We're looking for each and every department head, as well as employees from the various bargaining groups, as well as this council, to come up with ideas that we can increase our revenue or where we can um, reduce services if necessary and cut expenditures but this is just a, a tool that's going to help our departments come up with some of these ideas and that's why I think we should put it upon its passage or if you're not going to uh, put this 2% in at least come up with a, um, uh, a different number so that we do have a, a starting point if it's zero it's zero and then that's what we'll live with but I don't think we should just file this unless we have something to replace it <coughs> Hello, and Stefan. Thank you. Um, originally, my comments were on 10-6, but obviously they've combined because that was a petition on the property tax freeze. And I think it's a wonderful gimmick, you know, the property tax freeze. But what does it really mean? You know, I, I applaud Ms. Sorens who went door to door and asked people if they wanted a tax freeze. I mean, I can't imagine anybody coming to your door and asking you want a tax freeze, and you're going to say, no, I want more taxes. Nobody's going to say that. That's like knocking on your door and saying, you want $5,000. You're going to say yes. A few weeks ago, I was in the mayor's office right there in the hub of this whole tax freeze in Madison, and, and he got a letter from the Wisconsin, I think it was the city's group, but it could have been the county's group, explaining how this tax freeze in Madison was going to devastate the TIF programs. So immediately he called our Senator Leipam. Oh, no, no. Senator Leipam said, we never discussed that. That was never our intention. He called Senator Panzer. Nope, we never discussed it. That's not included. And apparently it was a glitch. And some people thought it was in the bill. Some people thought it wasn't. And my only comment was, if our full-time senators don't know what's in the bill, how are the citizens supposed to know a property tax freeze? You know, we could pass zero tonight. And then next, later on tonight, we start a stormwater fee. And all of a sudden, well, we're not raising your property taxes, but there's a million dollars in a stormwater fee. I mean, you've got to look at the whole package when you're doing budgets. Fees, taxes, and then see, like Alderman Graff said, what do we have at the end? You know, maybe it's going to be two, maybe it's going to be zero, maybe it's going to be, you know, one. Who knows? As many of you know, I served on the county board in a previous life, and one of the greatest comments I ever heard when we were talking about taxation came from current Assemblyman Van Akron when he was on his two-year vacation and served on the county board with me. And one night we were talking about taxes, and he said, you know, cutting taxes isn't hard. We'll just plow the middle of the road. Because that's what taxes is. It's all about services. And I've heard people and people and people stop me and say, Cut taxes. I want a property tax freeze. And I go back and say, okay, what are we doing? That, what are we spending money on that you don't like? I would guess Ms. Sorens could walk around her neighborhood and instead of saying, do you want a property tax freeze, knock on the door and say, what should we get rid of? And you might hit an elderly area and they might say, well, you know, gee, we don't need all this money in schools because we're not in schools anymore. We don't need all this money here. I'm not worried about this. And the next five might say, well, what are you kidding me? Don't cut those buses because the older people and the poor people and the younger people are the ones who use the buses. And the next group might be in an area where there's no crime, and they might say, cut the police, we don't care. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear from constituents, what services are we providing that we don't need? And I, I'm not hearing that. You, I, people call me, and I get them into that conversation, and 
very rarely do they have a, an idea of something we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. You know, they might have an idea here and an idea here, but it's never a consensus. They all want to cut property taxes. They're all, they're all concerned about that, as I'm, I'm sure everybody in this council wants to have the lowest property tax rate we can. But at what price? You know, do we want to be like the southern states and have no services? I mean, that's fine if we want to do that, but I think we need to hear that from their citizens. We're continuously ranked as a high taxation state and high taxation city by some people. But on the other hand, we're always one of the favorite places to live, best places to raise a family. Why is that? It's because of our services. I'm confident that our, our leaders, our working people and our union leaders and our management leaders, they'll work together. If they've got to sacrifice, they'll sacrifice. If we've got to sacrifice, we should sacrifice. You know, we're asking people to take cutting hours, maybe cut and pay, and that's their full-time job, their livelihood. I don't think any of us, this isn't our full-time job. So maybe we should look at, it, look at ourselves once and say, hey, what can we put in this scenario here? We're asking others to take a cut. Maybe we should take a cut. And I think we also need to do a better job of telling the citizens, you know, they want property tax relief. They should know what we're thinking about cutting. We sat here the other night and had a riveting presentation from the police department telling us that it's really about community groups getting together to work on different projects. And yet, what's in our suggested list of cuts maybe? The liaison officer, school guards, community policing programs, DARE officers. Now, I'm not saying they're going to get cut, but they're on the list. We're thinking about it, and that's fine. Maybe we, you know, we have to look at those options, and that's okay. But I look back at the one officer and a DPW person, I think, and a police officer who mentioned plowing the streets different to save money. I didn't get one person that said, oh yeah, I want property tax relief, let's plow the streets different. Every one of them said, we don't want the streets plowed different. Now, I'm sure they knew there was property tax savings there, but not one person came forward and said, yep, you can plow the streets different if we can save money. So I think it's a two-edged you know, two sword. We need to hear from the people who want property tax relief, but we want to know how do they perceive it. You know, it's easy to say cut people like there's a zillion people extra running around at City Hall. We've been cutting and cutting and cutting for 20 years. There's a point where you, know, you can't just cut and nobody notices it anymore. And that's fine. If they don't want the services, I'm all for that. All we've got to see, you know, some people say privatization. I think the disaster with Orange Cross 23% raise in six months, we've seen that once it's gone, you have no control over it. We could privatize the entire you know, garbage collection system and then we'd have no control over it. We could make people, some people say, let's drop off our, our refuge down at the headquarters. Great job for me, that'd be my 16 year old kid's job every day, every time you go take care of that garbage. But the elderly obviously couldn't do that. The majority of the people couldn't do that. You've got to look at the equality of sacrifice. What's best for all the people? I think too many people go into this and say, gee, I don't have kids in school anymore, let's forget those schools. I live in a good area, I don't have to worry about drugs and police, let's not, we don't need all those police officers running around. I think you need to look at the city as a whole and the services we provide and what's needed and what's not. And I thank you for your time. Okay, Pat, could we have a roll call, please? And I, and I, and I will be to file the resolution and the IRC. Berg? No. Bonet? No. Doyle? Aye. Groth? No. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Stefan? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? No. Wenninger? No. Bauman? Eight eyes, eight nose. No. Okay. Now you have to have another um, vote. Roll call on whether you want it passed. Yes. Alderman Perez. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Could uh, someone please explain to the public there what, what exactly happened here? Sure. You're not going to file, file the documents. The document. Now you still have a motion on the, the floor, floor for passage. passage. I realize that. Okay. The vote count. Pardon? There was a tie, there was a tie oh, the mayor cast the deciding yes. vote, so, so it's That's right. eight to nine. Thank I'm you. sorry, I didn't understand. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Groff. We have a motion. I have that motion on the floor. Okay. Yeah. So if there's no, you can discuss it now. Okay. It is, if there's no other discussion, we'll vote on it. No, this no, is just still this, one, this document. 10, nine. Okay, Pat, call the roll again. Now an I would be for passage. Bonet. Aye. Doyle. Roth? Aye. Manny? No. Monty Mayor? No. 
Moody? No. Perez? No. Rindfleisch? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Wangaman? No. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. It's eight to eight. Aye. So that's a nine eyes, eight no's. All right, now the rest of consent agenda. No. Is there any other discussion? Someone will talk about six. Alderman Weininger. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull 10, 11 stormwater user fee. I received numerous calls from constituents, and I would like for Tom Holton, the public works director, to explain to them um, what the need is for the user fee and also the benefits. The user fee. The user fee is based on an equivalent runoff unit, which is 2,250 square feet. It's an average of a residential property. Uh, currently, right now, the residential property contributes about 70 percent towards the runoff to the stormwater system, and or, or I'm sorry, contributing dollar-wise 70 percent, and runoff-wise contribute 56 percent. Uh, where business and industry contribute more and pay less. Uh, this fairly uh, spreads out the cost of uh, maintaining the system, which it's about $1.3, $1.4 million uh, for 04. And at uh, right now, just to pay for the operations of the system, about $2.65 a month uh, would fund the system per ERU. Uh, you know your commercial properties will have to go out and measure the square footage in previous areas. Uh, your uh, manufactured housing groups, they would be one ERU. A duplex or a three family would be 0.7 ERUs for each uh, unit. Uh, anything beyond that, uh, uh, four families larger, we'd have to go out and measure uh, or offer aerials the amount of uh, impervious area, rooftops, sidewalks, uh, pavements. And you know, we've, we've had discussion, we're going to have discussion more on Thursday if we want to add to that fee as part of our capital. For every dollar uh, per ERU a month raises about $500,000 a year, which could go towards projects such as 17th and Ashland, 12th and Parkwood. Uh, those are the big projects uh, that are you know, a $5 million project at, at uh, 17th and Ashland right now we're looking at. Okay. Okay. Alderman Manny. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in principle, I think it has a lot to say for it. In practice, I would like to have public hearings to further educate myself, as well as other uh, older people, and to educate the population about what's really involved. So I would vote no this evening, um, but I would rather have this tabled and come back at a later date to consider it. OK. Thank you. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Manny. I think this is a, an instance where uh, a lot of community input is warranted. This is an issue that I have received many calls on, and not one has been in favor of it. Uh, it's also an issue that came before this council with very few members that aren't here. They weren't here then, and this council voted it down because this council believed it was a tax, an additional tax on the constituents, on the people of Sheboygan. I don't know what has magically occurred here that is, no, it is viewed no longer as, as a tax, if, if that's going to be the case. Uh, at any rate, I, I think that uh, the matter warrants uh, community input, and uh, in that respect, I would move to hold. Actually, I would move to refer it back to committee so that the committee can make take the uh, proper steps to hold a public hearing. Sorry. Move a second to refer back to committee under discussion, and we'll do this one. Separately. Could I have a roll call on that? If there's no other discussion on is there any other discussion on this one? This came from Finance and Public Works. What committee do you want it referred to? Public Works. Alderman Ryan Flesh. Yep. On this document. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, 
it did come up through Public Works Committee, and uh, they are open to the public. However, it was, really wasn't announced to the general public that uh, so a creation of a new utility, something that hasn't been done, I'm sure, in years uh, here in town, is about to take place. I would agree with both Alderman Perez and Alderman Manny that we really need to allow for more public input. When we signed the agreement uh, with the Blue Harbor Project, a very important and critical issue to the city, we allowed for public input. I'd like to see the same happen in this as well. No other discussion? Okay, roll call please. And it's a referral back to Public, public Works. Works. And I is for referral. Doyle? To refer back. Yes. Aye. Graf? No. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? No. Winninger? Bauman? No. Berg? No. Bonnet? No. That's exciting. 10 eyes, 6 no's. Okay, so it gets referred to Public Works. Before we move on, I just want to clarify one thing. Uh, back on the last two votes ago, where I voted to break the tie, I think Alderman Stefan clarified that. Alderman Renflesh brought it up that a tax freeze, that is a good gimmick. But if you look at the state, what they were putting on was caps. It was not a tax freeze. At the 2% that we are capping our, tax, our taxes in the city of Sheboygan is less than what we probably could have went with the state budget on the caps. So we are doing a better job at holding our taxes down than what the state was allowing us to. And I think we're doing a darn good job in the city of Sheboygan by holding our taxes down. And that is one reason I voted yes to move ahead. And if you want to kill the city and gut all the departments by a zero budget with no increases, that's just what you're doing because you're not going to have any money for operations. So just to clarify that. Okay, Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. This is uh, just general comments on the consent agenda. If you look at the, the recent Sheboygan Press, uh, two of them, on Saturday, August 16th, it said uh, storm fee vote set for Monday. Uh, here on this one, this was uh, Sunday. It says city may limit property tax hikes and so on. I think that it's important that we start communicating better with the public than we're doing uh, presently because I'm constantly amazed at how many people tell me that they watch the, the cable television things of the council. Now, according to the consent agenda, both of these items were in the consent agenda, which means that if no one had pulled them forward, they would have been voted on what I would call anonymously. If, if the public were listening to this uh, council session and someone said, I want to listen in and see what they do on this storm water thing, if we hadn't called this forward, the public wouldn't have had a clue. They could have watched this whole meeting and not known whether we had voted on storm water fee. They could have watched this whole meeting and not known whether we had voted on the property tax increase or not. I don't know what the state law uh, says on consent agendas. I know that we're doing it legally because we do everything legally. Uh, but I'm concerned because to me the, the obvious intent of a consent agenda is to speed up the agenda by putting <coughs> trivial items in the consent agenda and keeping important items in the part where the voting is to go on. So the way I see the world 10.9 on establishing limits for the tax levy, 10.10 establishing a debt issuance policy, and 10.11 shouldn't have been included in the consent agenda. That should be letters from Sally and Joe saying we don't like the service we're getting and stuff like that. So in the future, I would like to see trivial items in the consent agenda and major policy things uh, in the regular agenda. I would also ask for one more thing. Whenever uh, Alderman Warner from PPS uh, has an important issue uh, from PPS, he gives a three or four sentence explanation to the council 
which age the viewing audience because then they know what the council is voting on. I would ask whoever is putting forth this important item should do the same thing that Alderman Warner does and give a three to four sentence explanation so the viewing audience knows what's going on. Because people, I had two people that say, it looks to me like the city's trying to sneak this through the consent agenda and so on. So by doing it that way, we give the appearance that we're sort of sneaking things past the public and we don't want to do that. Thank you. Pat, would you like to respond? I guess I'm the sneak. I'm the one who sets the consent agenda. If no one tells me what to do with a document, and I think it's routine, I don't know if there's going to be discussion. I, I'm not a voter of, of these documents. I am not privy to the information that is amongst the older persons on this. So if no one tells me not to put it on the consent agenda, that's where it goes. There's a couple of things if I hear um, scuttlebutt that I think there's going to be discussion, I'll keep it off the consent agenda. If I don't hear anything, that's where it goes unless I am told. So blame me, because I'm the one who sets the uh, consent agenda. I do not try to sneak anything through. Like I say, I have no vote. I have no, yet, no say so one way or the other. I'm just doing my job. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Pat, you're no sneak. <laughs> I, I think, all of, us, I think all of us are fully aware of that, and we do appreciate the work that you do and the initiative that you take. I think what Alderman Doyle was referring to is that if somebody, a chair perhaps, or, or perhaps even Your Honor, uh, is aware that it may become a controversial or, or an issue that, that uh, will, will, uh, will call forth uh, some good discussion, then it should, somebody should say, let's put it on uh, another uh, order of business other right. than the consent agenda question I have, who is going to do that? Do we first come for a serve or do we account the Chairman. chairs to do it? A chair, Chairman. a chair should chair or the department head that is in charge, of, you know, Correct. with that department that the, the chair okay. is Very in good. charge. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Warner, before I call on you, I, I was going to ask you a question anyway. Uh, with this stormwater management, going back to public works, obviously most of you aldermen don't attend all the meetings. A lot of you can attend all the committee meetings. Just a question, would that be better to go to the committee of a whole, where we're all here? Uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea, Your Honor. I think it would be a good place to, to explain it to the public and, and get something out there. I'd be fine with that. I think that uh, when we talk about issues like this, as an alderman, alder person, uh, when I get my agenda, I look at everything. The consent agenda part, the other part, I don't care where the document is. If it's something that I want to talk about, I'm going to pull that baby out of there and try to talk about it. I don't think it really matters too much whether it's on the consent agenda or the other one. You could try to slip something through on the consent agenda, but I tell you, I mark everything from, and you can look at my paper here, marks on there for every document. I highlight the ones that I, I think are going to be discussion on, and I prepare for them, and I do that with the whole agenda. The consent agenda, to me, is just part of the agenda. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about uh, some issues where it was a communication that has no bearing on the meeting or any of the larger issues, but I don't see that as a real problem myself. Uh, I think it was designed probably with the intent, as Alderman Doyle stated, for some of the less, less uh, important items or controversial items. Uh, but I think that's the way you have to look at it, and you have to go to the meetings. Uh, the stormwater issue has been in the press numerous times. I've been talking about it for probably two months. It's been out there many times. The press has done a good job on that, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's been on radio stations. It's been on talk shows on the radio. I've heard them discuss it on there. So say it just kind of dropped on the, on the street is a little bit, uh, in my mind, incorrect. Thank you. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Pat, needless to say, I didn't intend to uh, uh, no. <laughs> <coughs> insult you in any way. Uh, and I, but I don't approve of having the, the different people uh, pinpoint items. I think that has to be a structured task and I don't I agree with Alderman Warder that the two agendas are the same. Consent agenda, if you don't, definitely don't want important items on there. The president of the council, uh, that should be his responsibility to work with the city clerk to determine which items are on the consent agenda and which aren't. No, he never sees my agenda. I, I do the agenda on Thursdays. Um, that's not his job. 
His or hers. Back to my previous question. I believe you made the motion to go to Public Works, Alderman Perez. Do you have a problem with going to Committee of the Whole? I made a motion that I go to Public Works. I have no problem if it goes to Committee then, of the Then uh, ask for a reconsideration. So, so long as we give the public some sort of notice. Yeah, exactly. And so long as the hearing is held at an appropriate in here. time, not at 4 30 in the afternoon when people are working, I will move to reconsider the motion to back to the uh, uh, water runoff fee. Uh, Stormwater fee. Stormwater. Okay. Second. Alderman I'll also change my second as long as the uh, committee, the whole meeting that is referred to allows the public to have a voice and to speak at that time. That's why I'm asking, so they can come yes. up here and have that. Steve. Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Just a second. Honor, would we, I would move that we refer back to, that, uh, to the committee that hold the stormwater fee plan. Moved and seconded. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Alderman Warner, if you could set that up ASAP and give a, at least give a week's notice so it gets out in the press and on the radio that people know when the meeting's coming up. But we have to move on this. Thank you. Okay, after, oh, all of an order. Uh, Your Honor, I'm looking at next week, Monday, looks like an opportune time. I don't believe we have a council meeting uh, or anything else going on that night, so I would suggest that uh, we have a committee of the whole meeting next Monday night, which would be the 25th of August at uh, 6 p.m. Most people should be off of work by then. And How about seven? Seven, we can do seven. Give the people enough time to get home and eat and, and stuff and, if they work till five. And have it televised on TV8 so right. the viewing public at home can see it. And Thank you. Alderman Moody. Um, Your Honor, can we make sure that meeting is televised? Yes. Thank you. Just said that. Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion with the consent agenda, shortest consent agenda, but a lot of discussion, Nine but that's good. Months. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That would you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Ankren? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? 16 eyes. Motion carried. 10 12. Uh, we just still didn't really say 10 10. Pardon? It's going to lie 10 10. Excuse me, 10 10 is lying over. 10 12 to be referred. 10 13 hold for 10 20. 10 14 through 10 18 to be referred. 10 19. Resolution by Alderman. Wangaman, Winninger, and Perez authorizing the Director of City Development to fill the position of Housing Environmental Inspection in the Building Inspection Department. Alderman uh, Wangaman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd uh, like to amend the resolution if we can. Okay. No. Make a motion to put the resolution Shot upon its passage first, please. Okay. I'll, uh, resolution to uh, put the document upon its passage. Okay, move to second to put the document on this passage under discussion. Alderman Wangaman. Uh, originally, we had asked that this position be held for six, uh, one month. I'd like to amend that to uh, January 1. Second. It's moved to second that the position be not filled until January 1. Under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd be against holding that to January 1 because I feel the position with that department pays for itself. And uh, to explain that, I'd ask Paula Enders to uh, give us the numbers. Um, I explained before salaries and grievances at that department, the building inspection department, comes pretty close to paying for themselves. And we're looking at some cost reallocation between building inspection and wastewater. And then also um, the council approved a weights and measures fee. So what's anticipated in revenue in 2004 
and their anticipated budget, those two should um, come pretty close to matching. So in essence, they do pay for themselves. Okay. Alderman Perez, if you got to follow up. Alderman Perez, you had a question? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I also would oppose the, uh, the, the motion or the amendment to uh, hold it off until January. Uh, this discussion we, we, we've had uh, on several occasions. Um, uh, this is a position, as Paul had uh, mentioned, that, that pays for itself. Uh, no one said anything about uh, having finance wait till January to fill a position or, or for, to the other departments that I remember. Uh, this is a position that has been that has been vacant for I don't even remember how long But the work continues to be there, and it's building up It's, it's a situation where it's not a matter of whether the people want to do it or not It's a matter of they can't do it. They can't physically be at all these places at the same time uh, it's, it's a position that's critical to the community. It involves one with health uh, it Im involves one that generates revenue for this uh, for the city and in particular the department. So uh, I would hope that this council uh, votes no against the amendment and uh, approves the uh, resolution uh, as presented. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I wasn't at that meeting when they held that, but I talked to Paulette tonight and she says it would take her at least till January to get a person aboard. So I see no reason why it cannot be held to till January because she's the head of that department. Correct. Correct. Paulette wants this. Paulette. I, I did talk to Larry Hilbling tonight, the lead inspector, and we talked about filling that position. And what I did say was if we had a 30-day wait, by the time that the 30-day wait passes from tonight, and we advertise and we go through the hiring process, more than likely it would be pretty close to the end of the year before we get that position filled. And that was with the 30-day wait. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, along those lines, we don't need to amend it to, uh, <laughs> to, to wait until January. I think the process itself will take care of it. Why don't we just uh, vote down the amendment and pass it as originally introduced? I'll, for one thing, Alderman Perez, I also spoke to Paulette. And in that agreement, Rich knows this too, that a reorganization plan has to be come in before this council before I pass any of those positions. And I told Rich that too. So before I agree to that, and I think in a document it says they have to pass that past me too, I want to see reorganization plan before we hire people in the city. Now if Paulette brings something in before the first of the year and show that that's comfortable, but I do not see that happening before the first year until she gets the budget done. So I would like to see it not fill before the first of the year or if they come forward with reorganization plans. Talking about laying people off and filling positions, uh, when you may have to lay someone off to fill this position, I want to see that plan before we do that. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. They are right that building inspection does, in, in many ways, pay a lot of its cost uh, of providing service. But you know what? We need police officers. And what did we do there? We authorized the positions in the police department to be filled on January 1st of 2004. Why? Because of our budget concerns. Right. I think we should do the same with this position. Sure, it may not take, uh, it may take till January 1st, but it may not. I think that any dollar we can save in this city is something we need to do up until we find out what's happening in Madison. I support the hiring of another building inspector, and I, and I always have, especially a housing and environmental inspector such as we are looking at here. The committee is correct in recognizing that need for a person, and that part I support. I cannot, however, support filling the position before the first of the year, and I think it should say that in the document. If other departments must wait until 1104, then th so should this one. Again, we as a city need this position. We just don't need it until January 1st of 04. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman uh, Vanderwill. Thank Vanderwill. you, Your Honor. Excuse me. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess taking into consideration with your organization that we're better off waiting to see if there's going to be layoffs before we do anything like that. So I will support the amendment. Thank you. Alderman Wagaman. Just, just one short comment on that. We're going to have to make a lot of difficult decisions this year, and this is only one of the, right. one of the many that we're going to look at. And there are going to be people who have long faces, of course. And uh, for us to start comparing who's more important, a building inspector or a police officer or a fireman or a policeman, or, you know, this is a, a real quagmire. We don't want to get into that. But uh, 
we've been holding off hiring police officers, we've been holding off hiring people all over the place. Every department in the city has a lot of openings in it, and it's, it's only going to get worse. Uh, the public wants lower taxes, we're trying to give it to them. They also must realize that uh, if they pay for hot dogs, they're not going to get lobster tail. You know, this is just the way the situation is going to be. Uh, you know, you can't walk into the American Club and pay for a hot dog, expect the waiter to bring you a lobster tail. It just doesn't work that way. If we're going to cut taxes, then a lot of things are going to be cut, jobs are going to be undone. That's just the way it's going to work. And uh, it's all part of our very tough decision-making process. And that's why I introduced the uh, amendment. Thank you. Pat, would you call the roll on amendment, please? You don't want to no. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Okay, Alderman Longerman? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion then that we uh, pass the amended document, or uh, put the amended document upon its passage. It's been moved and seconded. We put the amended document on its passage. Under discussion. Okay. Alderman Graw. Excuse me. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to applaud this council for stepping up to the plate and taking a, um, a step towards uh, fiscal responsibility, which we're going to need many of these in the future. You can take a voice vote if you want. Okay, we'll take a voice vote if you want. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Bonnet. Uh, just a side comment on that. I find it very interesting. The people who are yelling for a tax freeze in the city are the same ones who are yelling to hire people right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, 1020, by Alderman Van Akron, Perez, Manny, Wangeman, and Winninger, accepting the reopening agreement, reopener agreement with, for the 2003 and the collective bargaining agreement for 2004 with local 5011 un, un, Union of Professional City Employees. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we put 1013, file 1013. I need a suspension. I need a suspension. Move to second for suspension. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Any objections? Excuse me for suspension. Hearing none. Proceed, please. Your Honor, I move that we hit the reports on 1013. We file and we pass resolution 1020, which is the agreement for 2003 and 4 with the local 5511 Union of Professional City Employees. Second. It's moved and second that we accept. And pass the resolution on the uh, agreement for the city employees. Under is there any discussion? <coughs> okay, you're late. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I've been getting, like I say, a lot of feedback <coughs> lately from uh, citizens, and one of the things that they're suggesting is that uh, uh, the city, if we're really this short of money, that we start looking at a couple years of freezing wages and so on. Uh, it's sort of the city apparently has the feeling that it should be a guaranteed thing that that people get a raise every year but clearly in a deficit situation like we're in uh, we should start considering that next year we also for those people that don't want to cut back services every time uh, in a times of crisis you give a, a raise that impounds or encumbers, say, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000. If you already have a deficit you're coping with, that means more layoffs and so on. And finally, uh, I think to be more realistic about uh, uh, negotiations, I think it's time that we start considering it as a total package. What actually is the, the cost to the city of the, of the contract? Because presently it just appears as 3%, but if uh, the insurance benefits were five or six percent, uh, then your salary package you're looking at is really eight or nine percent. And in business and industry, they're monitoring those kinds of things, and I think we have to do that in government also. 
Alderman Doyle, if you could make the uh, labor management meeting Thursday afternoon at 1.30 uh, be benefit. If any alderman want to make that, uh, please come up there and listen to what we're, uh, we have to say. Okay, we have the resolution before us. To another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Mountain Mayor. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Rinfleisch. Stefan. Aye. Van Ankren. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weniger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1021 through 1022 will be referred. 1023 will lie over. 1024, I'd like to send a strategic fiscal plan. 1025, rather than lying over, I want to send it back committee. Uh, 1025 to be referred. Matters laid over. 962, resolution by Alderman Groff Doyle accepting the liability insurance proposal and continuing membership in the Simnic for 2004 through 2006. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved to second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody, Aye. Perez, Grinfleisch, Stefan, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weniger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Bonet, <laughs> Doyle, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 953, a resolution by Alderman Bauman, Warner, Graf, authorizing entry into contract for purchase, purchase of parking utility Aye. meters. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved a second resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick question for my education and perhaps for others. Um, a comment or two about the uh, revenue from our parking meters vis-a-vis uh, -vis expenses related to them. Ron? Uh, thank you. I'm not sure that I heard the question completely, but uh, what this project is is to replace the uh, mechanical meter insides with electronic meters. We currently have about 900 meters out there, and this would be updating the last 250 to bring them up to what the rest of the system is. What's the revenue flow from the parking meters in the city for a year? I, I don't have the number off the top of my head. Uh, it, it's substantial as, as part of the parking utility fund. <laughs> no one knows it on the top of their head. Thank you for your help. Okay. Alderman Ryan Flesh. Perhaps you could explain uh, what the importance of replacing the mechanical with the electronic as well. Yes, yeah, so also with this time, we're, we're in the process. Uh, we've just raised our, our parking meter fees uh, to 30 cents an hour, and this allows us to uh, accomplish that with our mechanical meters and uh, uh, increase the revenue to offset our expenses. And as you know, or most of you know, that the uh, parking utility uh, operates independent of the rest of the city's general budget. So the parking utility funds stay with the parking utility to help that operate. Okay. <coughs> to another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Perez? I'm sorry. I can't. Okay, I didn't hear you. Rinfleisch? I'm not hearing you. Am I deaf? He said I. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear. Unless they're answering before I finish your name. Stefan? Aye. There you are. <laughs> Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Pony? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. Thank Night. you. <laughs> 954, resolution by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Doyle, Bonet, transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman Groff. Yeah, under that resolution, along with resolution 108, which is in regards to transfer funds to provide money to establish an estimated revenue and appropriation for a donation received from Wigwong Mills and Van Horn for Maywood Earth Ride, I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. Sorry. Move to second that both resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. 
Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 959, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, amending an ordinance which vacated that part of South 12th Street from the north line of Indiana Avenue, north to the south line of the railroad right-of-way between blocks 245 and 246, original plat, to correct the legal description. Alderman Warner. I uh, thank your honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Move to second the ordinance be put upon its passage. Under, under discussion, your honor, you are correct. This is to correct the legal description of the property of something we're ready to pass so that, so that it's the right thing. That's so it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Right. Okay. <laughs> Pat, would you call the roll, please? Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Rin Fleisch. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 960 by Alderman Van Akron, Winninger, Perez, adding one public works foreman, parks to the public works department. One public works foreman, parks to the public works department, parks, forestry, and cemetery division table of organization. Alderman Don Van Akron. Your Honor, move the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second the resolution be put ordinance. upon its passage. Ordinance, excuse me, be put upon its passage under discussion. Your Honor, what we're doing here is uh, we're letting, we're opening up a spot. We're getting rid of a supervisor. We're moving one man up to a forward room, which would save some money. Yeah, and Tom Holton did bring in a reorganization plan. He showed the cost savings and what we would save to the city by doing this. So something I required. So I have no problem with that, and no one would be laid off by doing that. There's no objections, no other discussion. Excuse me, Alderman Groff. Your Honor, in the future when one of these are coming in and there is a, a reorganizational plan or something like You'd that. You'd like to see that? To see the cost comparison. Sure, and I would I'll like make sure. That, please. I'll make sure all the Aldermen get copies of that. There's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stefan. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1026 will go to public works. 1027 will go to public works. 1028 through 1033 can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the reports of officer. Moved and seconded, accept and file the ROs. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I don't have something to say on every single one of them, but I do have on a few that I think is important as I've been approached by some people that have a concern with these, okay. especially the one regarding the uh, Little Red Schoolhouse. School on that one, that was document 1028, Your Honor. And uh, the Sheboygan Child Care Center would like to purchase the Little Red Schoolhouse. And the Public Works Committee will, will be working with them to help make that happen over time. Uh, and in filing this, the process will continue. And we are giving them an extension also on agreement, And correct? we're giving them uh, a one-year extension on the contract. I think that's another document here, Your mm -hmm. Honor. And uh, we're going to give them a one-year extension because they can't raise funds to purchase the building at this time. They have to wait until they're out of their, uh, some state regulation that limits the times that they can raise funds. That's fine. And uh, that should be coming forward. So okay. that's what this one is on. And on, on 1029, uh, that is for 1927 Arizona Avenue, which is having a uh, property deed transferred to Jan and Kay Yergoritz, Your Honor. This is part of an ongoing process the city is involved in, in trying to rid itself of unused property and getting it onto the tax rolls. In, in uh, 1029 and 1030, two more documents on here. Uh, the proper documents will be drawn up to transfer the parcels, and those recipients of these parcels will be paying all title searches and closing costs, and the property will be back on the tax rolls. And that's it. Okay. There's another discussion. All in favor? Oh, excuse me. Alderman Van Akron. Did we also take 1031 on that one, or did we? 
Yeah. We're going out through 33? We're going through 33. Okay, I want to question 1031. Sure. We're saying that it's a street right away. That's about a half a block that goes through a piece of land that ends up in the river. Yes. So yeah, I don't know yeah. where the right away is in the road. Uh, well, they're not planning on putting, putting the road through there, Don, but we had a similar situation on, uh, I believe it was Wisconsin Avenue on the other side. Correct. Where, uh, <coughs> Typically, the city doesn't give up the street rights away because that's public access to the waterway. And there's, I believe there's some regulations involved in that. And I think Steve could probably give us a little, a little more on that. The one with the 12th Street was that there was never going to be anything that could go through there. And there was no public access to any, any waterway or anything like that. <coughs> on this particular one, there's access to the waterway. But for Mr. Phil, what the plan commission worked out on this is that he can still use that street because it's a public street. He can use it as a driveway to get into his building, but now he just won't have to pay taxes on it. Unfortunately, there's another property owner on the other side that if we were to give this property to Mr. Phil, he would only get half of it. The other half would have to go to the other property owner, and they may or may not want it. Uh, we didn't get into that point, but that's just the way the state law is. So that's basically what happened. But you know, He's still got access to the road, but... Okay. Uh, city keeps right away for public. There's no other discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1034 by City Plan Commission recommending extension of the lease with Sheboygan Child Care Center. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached resolution. Moved and second to accept and file arrow and pass the resolution. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this will allow the Sheboygan Child Care Center to lease the Little Red Schoolhouse for one more year, as a document I mentioned earlier, to allow time to raise funds needed to for the eventual purchase of the property. And uh, for them, this is a good thing. Uh, a lot of families that use that place uh, need to have this uh, Little Red Schoolhouse stay open, and it's a good thing. So. <coughs> Okay, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Vanderweel? Aye. Longman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. <coughs> Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 1035 will go to Public Works. 1036 will be referred to Public Works. 1037 and 38, Finance. 1039 will lie over. 1040, by risk management, recommending filing documents submitted by a communication from Anna Vaughn, requesting reconsideration of her claim for the damage dress as the committee's position to deny the claim remains unchanged. Risk management. Alderman Groff? Can I move that the... You want to take 41? You want to take 41, 41 also? Sure. 41, which is um, uh, regarding submitting a claim from Ross and Beth Stanley for alleged damage to their basement floor due to sewage backup and flooding in the basement. The Risk Management Committee recommended the claim be denied, the document be placed on file, and the City Attorney served notice of disallowance. I move that those two RCs be accepted and adopted. It's moved and seconded that two RCs be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll? Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stephan, Van Akron, Vanderweel. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1042 lies over. 1043 by Protection and Safety, Public Protection and Safety, recommending filing documents submitted, submitting a communication for Habitat for Humanity Lakeside, requesting a waiver for all building permits for a new home, storage and driveway, and denying the request. 1043, Public Protection Safety, Alderman Warringer. I thank your honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of committee. Moved and second to accept and file. Under discussion. Accept and Set, adopt. Accept and adopt. Excuse accept me. and adopt, yes. 
Uh, under discussion, Your Honor, we did do this in 2000 and 2001. Uh, but with the current climate, the committee felt we were giving our, our opening ourselves up uh, in the city up to claims of favoritism and possible legal problems. And the city attorney's office recommended that we don't do this. There are many other groups that, that could come forward and ask uh, for fee waivers, and the feeling was is it's uh, probably not something we want to be doing in the future. The city attorney recommends denying the request, and the committee agreed. Mm -hmm. If there's no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1044, RC by Protection and Safety, recommending denying beverage operator license 6052 as the applicant has moved out of the state. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Could we also do 1045? Sure. Uh, 1044, the applicant for the license moved out of state, so we're, we have to deny. And 1045 is just a, a big number of licenses that we're approving. Move in a second, accept and adopt the RCs. Under discussion. <coughs> yes. Steve? Uh, Alderman Doyle, I guess I would suggest you request uh, if the license applicant is present and wants to be heard. To make sure. uh, it's now he's probably out of state, but uh, I think. I, I understand. Is Mr. O'Connor present? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Another discussion? Pat, would you call the roll, please? Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1046, a resolution by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Winninger. Wangaman and Vanderweel establishing a special committee to study the feasibility of establishing a municipal court. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Moved and seconded resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, this is a resolution establishing a special committee to study the feasibility of establishing a, a municipal court. It would be resolved that the Common Council hereby establishes a special committee to study the feasibility of establishing a municipal court comprised of two older persons, a representative from the city attorney's office, a representative of the court services division of the Sheboygan Police Department, a representative of the Sheboygan County Bar Association, and two citizens to be appointed by the mayor and approved by the Common Council. The finance director shall be an ex officio member, member of the special committee. Be it further resolved that the special committee's purpose shall be to consider the feasibility of creating a municipal court and to develop recommendations for creating and maintaining such a court. Be it further resolved that the special committee shall report said recommendations to the Committee on Public Protection and Safety on or before September 30th, 2004, and shall terminate on October 15th, 2004. Your Honor, the Public Protection and Safety Committee, through its licensing function, has been discussing this for several months. Last year, the City of Plymouth started a municipal court system and that rekindled our interest. There is a plethora of issues involved in the creation of a municipal court. If those issues are properly addressed and a successful court system established in the city of Sheboygan, the Public Protection and Safety Committee believes a separate body, including professional and community representatives, should be created and bring back its recommendation to the Common Council. There are many positives that could come out about from establishment of a municipal court system. And if this committee finds a system like this is good for Sheboygan, then we will reap the benefits. If not, then we will know. The Public Protection and Safety Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Alderman Warner, maybe I missed something here, but what is the name of that committee going to be? There's no name in the resolution. Uh, we actually don't have a name in, in resolution, but I would call it the Special Committee on Municipal, municipal court? court. Right. Okay, thank you. Alderman Wangaman. Uh, just a comment on this uh, item. Sheboygan, for well over 100 years, had a municipal court system. Uh, most cities in the state of Wisconsin have municipal court systems. Uh, just recently, uh, several small towns in our area developed or adopted a municipal court system. I, I think it would be a more expedient way for us to handle ordinance violations and uh, things of that nature. 
So uh, I would, of course, support this document. There's no other discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1047 will be referred to Sheboygan Transit. 1048 will go to Sheboygan Transit. 1049, building use. Steve. No, 1049 is not building use. 1049 is not building use? That's no, what we I find out. It's going to be suspended. Okay, 1049 is not building use. Okay, all of them in order. Well, we talked about it in building use. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> anyway, well, I, I would make a motion the resolution be put uh, upon its passage. Oh, first, I have to ask for suspension. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, proceed. On that, Your Honor, I would make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute mm -hmm. the tenant lease agreement for the second floor of the former Rainitz Drugstore property. The appropriate city officials are hereby authorized and directed to execute the tenant lease agreement between the City of Sheboygan and EW Real Estate LLC for the second floor space in the former Rainitz Drugstore building at 807 Center Avenue a copy of which is attached here too. Your Honor, uh, as you're aware, the city leases the second floor of the former Rainitz Drugstore at 807 Center Avenue to provide office space for a planning department and for our city attorney's offices. Previous leases were for five years, and this one is for three. In the previous leases, I might add that they had automatic increases each year. This particular lease, the, the lease amount stays the same for the entire term of three years. And it stays the same as it is for this year, so we're not even facing an increase. It's a little easier to budget for that. Um, when a new police station is built and City Hall is remodeled, and I know right now a lot of us think that'll never happen, but it will happen someday. At that time, the planning department and, his, and his, the city attorney's office will be moving into City Hall, and we'll be saving this $40,000 a year that it costs us to lease this space. Building use talked about this a couple of years ago. Tom, we talked about locating those offices in other city buildings and it's just impractical for the functioning of the city with the city attorney's office to be miles away and things like that at this time. But um, this is one of those issues where we wish we didn't have to do this, but it's gonna be a good thing. And what it does is it limits it to three years and hopefully in 2005, we have our design set for a new police station and, and we'll be working on building that and we may have to go by a year to year lease after that, but I think this will be uh, something that will take care of itself when we have the space. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a roll call on there? Pat, hearing no there, would you call the roll, please? Weninger? Aye. Fallman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. Okay, now 1050. <laughs> 1050 is a communication from Roger Sontag, 2232 North 25th Street, relative to the site location for a new police station. And that will go to building use. 1051 is an RO uh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Al uh, Holzheimer. Principal of Emanuel Lutheran School requesting a change in the no parking zone in front of 1616 Illinois Avenue. Public protection and safety. 1052 is a communication received by the mayor from Robert Hurdle discouraging the use of the recreation trail on Broughton Drive for dog walking. That will go to public protection and safety. 1053 is a communication received by the mayor from Darling Quashus requesting the city make a serious effort to bring a grocery store to the downtown area. That can go either to Redevelopment Authority or Plan Commission. Paulette, where would you want to go? Redevelopment? Very good. Good guess. <laughs> Move to second adjourn. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye.